Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Stuart Norville. In this edition, the Islamic State group's aim to form a caliphate in Syria and Iraq may have ended in long-term failure, but it is clear that the group is now aiming at other targets in the world. Perhaps the strongest, the Sahel region, of North Africa. There, the government forces, particularly of Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger and Chad, helped by around 5,000 French troops, face a constant daily battle to keep the thousands of the group's fighters and thousands of Al-Qaeda fighters at bay across an area that measures over 5 million square kilometres. Well, France 24 has gained special access to follow troops from Niger as they go about their patrols. Cyril Pyon reports. Niger at the end of the rainy season. A dike has just given way a few kilometers upstream in neighboring Mali. The northeastern road and the outskirts of the capital, Niamey, are underwater. Hey, kid, come here. It's OK, let us through now. Our compulsory armed escort is quickly joined by a convoy of Niger's special forces. Together, we quickly make our way towards the region of Abala in the province of Tilaberi. To the south, Burkina Faso. To the north, Mali. The entire area is under a state of emergency. This is an epicenter of West African jihadism. It's here, in the Sahel, that rival affiliates of the Islamic State group and Al-Qaeda have plans to instate a vast caliphate. We're told that from time to time, every Thursday, a motorcyclist comes around here, so we're going to check it out. Motorbikes are forbidden here. As soon as we hear of a motorbike, we know we're dealing with a terrorist because the drivers always have a weapon slung across their back. Heading the convoy, Captain Aziz knows the desert well. For months now, with his group of hand-picked soldiers, he's been patrolling the grey area along the Malian border, where the Islamist state group Sahel branch is developing fast. We reach a first village. We can never be sure. There might be fighters hiding among civilians. So we have to be wary of retaliation. That's why we have to protect anyone who might be willing to give us good information. All clear. Okay. We have to look inside the drums in case it's petrol. They might secretly be using motorbikes. Usually when they come, it's to refuel, that kind of thing. 
The border's pretty long. That's why they probably use motorbikes to go faster, to go in and out really quickly, like thieves. Have you seen anyone on a motorbike in the village recently? What kind of motorbike? No one's come to the village on a motorbike. Only God can see these things. I can't. We know that there's a man called Triori in the area, and that he comes to your village mosque every evening. And we suspect him of leading the local jihadist group. No, I don't know. Caught in the crossfire of this conflict, it's villagers who pay the highest price. In 2019, no fewer than 4,000 civilians were killed in this area. I'll never know whether it was a military bullet or a jihadist bullet that wounded me. I'll never know who shot at me. I was in my field pounding the millet when the shooting began. God only knows which side the bullet came from. Same country, different front line. We're now following Mohamed Bazoum, Niger's Mr. Security, as he campaigns along the border with Nigeria. The former interior minister is running for the 2020 presidential election. The fact that we're offering to welcome refugees and ensure their safety in this area, despite the very dangerous armed groups operating along the border, that's proof that we have complete control of the situation. Thanks to the presence of large units of defense and security troops. This vast region is the fiefdom of Islamic sect Boko Haram that pledged allegiance to the Islamic State group in 2015. May God be with you. May God be with you. Number three, you'll be at the back. Embedded in a high security electoral convoy, we follow the candidate whose visit to the region is principally aimed at making the state's presence felt just kilometers away from Nigeria. Peace has returned to the region, and that's thanks to us, the government, to our policies, and to our relentless efforts to protect you. We are a small country, surrounded by unstable neighbors and borders that need to be secured. Rest assured, we have enough weapons at our disposal to reinforce security even further if necessary. The sun rises on a new day at Walam base. It's from here that troops launched Operation al Mahau or Operation Whirlwind. The new offensive, led by anti-terrorist special forces, has one clear aim, to reclaim lost territory. We 
We've been involved in Operation Alma Howe since January. We operate alone, with only aerial support from our partners, but on the ground, our unit especially, we've always operated alone. US Army advisers and members of the international coalition are clearly visible here. New methods, new equipment, the elite units operating from Walam base have already been involved in multiple operations in the field this year. We took some pictures to remember it by. Hey, mommy. Hey, mommy, how are you? Bonjour, ça va. Yes, fine. Ça va très bien. Everyone here is doing well. Inshallah. Inshallah, God willing, one day the battle will be over. But the Sahel region covers the width of an entire continent, from the Atlantic to the Red Sea. So how do you keep control over five million square kilometers? That's the great conundrum facing the armies of Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger, those countries most affected by the violence. With Lieutenant Buhari's unit, we enter a village near the so-called Three Borders area, the most dangerous part of the Sahel. I'm from the military. I come from Walam. I'm here to help. Today, the army medic is trying out a new tactic. Today, we've brought a lot of medicine with us to help you treat the villagers. Listen to me, women. Silence, please. Silence. We are all the same. Whatever village we come from, we need to stay united and share the same things. We've brought medicine, especially for the children, as well as tea and sugar, and the chief will distribute it all. Despite the general sense of excitement, everyone here knows that in less than an hour, the troops and their armoured vehicles will be gone, leaving the village far behind them. We brought them tools, the funds and goods they need, so it should foster a sense of goodwill. We give them this help without expecting anything in return, so... You see, this is a perfect example of what I'm explaining. In their local dialect, these women are saying, thank you, may God repay you. Our mission, embedded with Niger's army, is coming to a close. Like something of a mirage, a French convoy of Barkhan forces suddenly appears and drives by in a long, almost unending procession. A fitting representation of France's open-ended mission in the Sahel. Unless, of course, the coalition and its thousands of foreign troops suddenly choose to pull out, leaving local units and civilians high and dry. Not that the villagers caught in the middle can do much more than watch from the dangerous sidelines. Aren't they beautiful? It's like having our own military parade. We admire French troops as much as we admire our own. The number of Islamist fighters in Africa is estimated at around 15,000, making it the biggest jihadist contingent on the planet. A contingent that's only growing and that has already extended well beyond the Sahel 
from Ivory Coast to Mozambique, sparking fears that the dystopia of a global caliphate is rising from its ashes on the African continent. Cyril Pine reporting there. Well, thanks for watching this week's Reporters. Don't forget, of course, you can see it again and all the previous editions as well on our website. That's at France 24. Thanks for watching. More news is coming up very shortly.